Section 42 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. First Chronicles, chapters 10 to 22. This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Michael Armenta. Chapter 10. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell down, slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard after Saul, and after his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan, and Abinadab, and Melchishua, the sons of Saul. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was wounded of the archers. Then said Saul to his armor-bearer, Draw thy sword, and thrust me through therewith, lest those uncircumcised come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. So Saul took a sword, and fell upon it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise on the sword, and died. So Saul died, and his three sons, and all his house died together. And when all the men of Israel that were in the valley saw that they had fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, then they forsook their cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And it came to pass... On the morrow, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his sons fallen in Mount Gilboa. And when they had stripped him, they took his head and his armor, and sent into the land of the Philistines round about to carry tidings under their idols and to the people. And they put his armor in the house of their gods, and fastened his head in the temple of Dagon. And when all Jabesh Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul, they arose, all the valiant men, and took away the body of Saul, and the bodies of his sons, and brought them to Jabesh, and buried their bones under the oak in Jabesh, and fasted seven days. So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew them, and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. Chapter 11 then all Israel gathered themselves to David, unto Hebron, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. And moreover in time past, even when Saul was king, thou wast he that lettest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord thy God said unto thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be ruler over my people Israel. Therefore came all the elders of Israel to the king in Hebron. And David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of the Lord by Samuel. And David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, which is Jebus, where the Jebusites were, the inhabitants of the land. And all the inhabitants of Jebus said to David, Thou shalt not come hither. Nevertheless, David took the castle of Zion, which is the city of David. And David said, Whosoever smiteth the Jebusites first shall be chief and captain. So Joab the son of Zeruiah went first up and was chief. And David dwelt in the castle, therefore they called it the city of David. And he built the city round about, 
even from Nilo round about. And Joab repaired the rest of the city. So David waxed greater and greater, for the Lord of hosts was with him. These also are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, who strengthened themselves with him in his kingdom, and with all Israel, to make him king, according to the word of the Lord concerning Israel. And this is the number of the mighty men whom David had. Jeshabim, a Hakmonite, chief of the captains, he lifted up his spear against three hundred, slain by him at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dado, the Ahohite, who was one of the three mighties. He was with David at Pasdamin, and there the Philistines were gathered together to battle, where was a parcel of ground full of barley. And the people fled from before the Philistines. And they set themselves in the midst of that parcel, and delivered it, and slew the Philistines. And the Lord saved them by a great deliverance. Now three of the thirty captains went down to the rock, to David, into the cave of Adullam. And the host of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in the hold, and the Philistines' garrison was then at Bethlehem. And David longed, and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, that is at the gate. And the three brake through the host of the Philistines, and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem, that was by the gate, and took it, and brought it to David. But David would not drink of it, but poured it out to the Lord, and said, My God! Forbid it me, that I should do this thing? Shall I drink the blood of these men that have put their lives in jeopardy? For with the jeopardy of their lives they brought it. Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mightiest. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, he was chief of the three. For lifting his spear against three hundred, he slew them, and had a name among the three. Of the three he was more honourable than the two, for he was their captain. Howbeit he attained not to the first three. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabziel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. Also he went down and slew a lion in a pit in a snowy day. And he slew an Egyptian, a man of great stature, five cubits high. And in the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam. And he went down to him with a staff, and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and slew him with his own spear. These things did Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and had the name among the three mighties. Behold, he was honourable among the thirty, but attained not to the first three. And David set him over his guard. Also the valiant men of the armies were Asahel the brother of Joab, Elhanan the son of Dado of Bethlehem, Shemoth the Hararite, Elez the Pelonite, Ira the son of Ekesh the Tekoite, Abiezer the Antithite, Sibekai the Hushathite, Eli the Ahohite, Meharai the Natophathite, Heland the son of Bena the Natophathite, Ethai the son of Ribai of Gibeah, that pertained to the children of Benjamin, Beniah the Parathonite, Hurai of the brooks of Gaash, Abiel the Arbathite, Asmaveth the Baharumite, Eliabah the Shalbonite, the sons of Hashem the Gizonite, Jonathan the son of Shaj the Hararite, Ahiam the son of Sekar the Hararite, Eliphal the son of Ur, Hefer the Macarathite, Ahijah the Pelonite, 
Hezro the Carmelite, Nerai the son of Ispe, Joel the son of Nathan, Mibar the son of Hageri, Zelek the Ammonite, Nahari the Barathite, the armor-bearer of Joab the son of Zeruiah, Ira the Ithrite, Garab the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zebad the son of Ali, Adina the son of Shiza the Reubenite, a captain of the Reubenites, and thirty with him, Hanan the son of Mecha, and Joshaphat the Mithnite, Uzziah the Ashterathite, Shema and Jehiel the sons of Hothan the Aroerite, Jediel the son of Shimri, and Joha his brother the Tizite, Eliel the Mahavite, and Jerubai, and Joshaviah the sons of Elnam, and Ithma the Moabite, Eliel and Obed, and Jesiel the Mesabiite. Chapter 12 Now these are they that came to David, to Ziklag, while he yet kept himself close, because of Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men, helpers of the war. They were armed with bows, and could use both the right hand and the left in hurling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow, even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. The chief was Ahiezer, then Joash, the sons of Shema the Gibeathite, and Jezeel and Pelet, the sons of Azmaveth, and Berakah, and Jehu the Antithite, and Ismaeah the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty, and over the thirty, and Jeremiah, and Jehaziel, and Johanan, and Josabad, the Gadarathite, Eluzii, and Jeremoth, and Beeliah, and Shemariah, and Shephatiah, the Harufite, Elkanah, and Jeziah, and Azariel, and Joezer, and Jashabim, the Korhites, and Joela, and Zebediah, the sons of Jeraham of Gedor. And of the Gadites there separated themselves unto Saul, into the hold, to the wilderness, men of might, and men of war fit for the battle, that could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like the faces of lions, and were as swift as the rose upon the mountains. Ezer the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmena the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atei the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, Machbenai the eleventh. These were the sons of Gad, captains of the host. One of the least was over an hundred, and the greatest over a thousand. These are they that went over Jordan in the first month, when it had overflown all his banks, and they put to flight all them of the valleys, both toward the east and toward the west. And there came of the children of Benjamin and Judah to the hold unto David. And David went out to meet them, and answered and said unto them, If ye become peaceably unto me to help me, mine eyes shall be knit unto you, but if ye come to betray me to mine enemies, seeing there is no wrong in mine hands, the God of our fathers look thereon, and rebuke it. Then the Spirit came upon Amasai, who was the chief of the captains, and he said, Thine are we, David, and on thy side, thou son of Jesse. Peace, peace be unto thee and peace be to thine helpers, for thy God helpeth thee. Then David received them, and made them captains of the band. And there fell some of Manasseh to David, when he came with the Philistines against Saul to battle, but they helped them not, for the Lord of the Philistines upon advisement sent him away, saying, 
he will fall to his master Saul, to the jeopardy of our heads. As he went to Ziklag, there fell to him of Manasseh, Adna and Jozebad, and Jediel and Michael and Jozebad, and Elihu and Zilthai, captains of the thousands that were of Manasseh. And they helped David against the band of the rovers, for they were all mighty men of valor, and were captains in the host. For at that time, day by day, there came to David to help him, until it was a great host, like the host of God. And these are the numbers of the bands that were ready, armed to the war, and came to David, to Hebron, to turn the kingdom of Saul to him, according to the word of the Lord. The children of Judah that bear shield and spear were six thousand and eight hundred, ready, armed for the war. Of the children of Simeon, mighty men of valor for the war, seven thousand and one hundred. Of the children of Levi, four thousand and six hundred. And Jehoiada was the leader of the Aaronites, and with him were three thousand and seven hundred. And Zadok, a young man, mighty of valor, and of his father's house, twenty and two captains. And of the children of Benjamin, the kindred of Saul, three thousand. For hitherto the greatest part of them had kept the ward of the house of Saul. And of the children of Ephraim, twenty thousand and eight hundred, mighty men of valor, famous throughout the house of their fathers. And of the half-tribe of Manasseh, eighteen thousand, which were expressed by name, to come and make David king. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their commandment. Of Zebulun, such as went forth to the battle, expert in war, with all instruments of war, fifty thousand, which could keep rank, they were not of double heart, and of Naphtali a thousand captains, and with them with shield and spear thirty and seven thousand, and of the Danites, expert in war, twenty and eight thousand and six hundred, and of Asher, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, forty thousand. And on the other side of Jordan, of the Reubenites, and the Gadites, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, with all manner of instruments of war for the battle, an hundred and twenty thousand. All these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel, and all the rest, also of Israel, were of one heart to make David king. And there they were with David three days, eating and drinking, for their brethren had prepared for them. Moreover, they that were nigh them, even unto Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, brought bread on asses and on camels, and on mules, and on oxen, and meat, meal, cakes of figs, and bunches of raisins, and wine, and oil, and oxen, and sheep, abundantly. For there was joy in Israel. Chapter 13 And David consulted with the captains of thousands, and hundreds, and with every leader, and David said unto all the congregation of Israel, If it seems good unto you, and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel, and with them also to the priests and Levites which are in their cities and suburbs, that they may gather themselves unto us. And let us bring again the ark of our God to us, for we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. 
and all the congregation said that they would do so. For the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. So David gathered all Israel together, from Shihor of Egypt, even unto the entering of Hemath, to bring the ark of God from kirjath Jearim. And David went up, and all Israel, to Bela, that is, to kirjath Jearim, which belonged to Judah, to bring up thence the ark of God, the Lord, that dwelleth between the cherubims, whose name is called on it. And they carried the ark of God in a new cart out of the house of Abinadab, and Uzzah and Ahiel drave the cart. And David and all Israel played before God with all their might, and with singing, and with harps, and with psalteries, and with timbrels, and with cymbals, and with trumpets. And when they came unto the threshing floor of Chidon, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and he smote him, because he put his hand to the ark, and there he died before God. And David was displeased, because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah, wherefore that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of God that day, saying, How shall I bring the ark of God home to me? So David brought not the ark home to himself to the city of David, but carried it aside into the house of Obedidom the Gittite. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obedidom in his house three months. And the Lord blessed the house of Obedidom and all that he had. Chapter 14 Now Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David, and timber of cedars, with masons and carpenters, to build him an house. And David perceived that the Lord had confirmed him king over Israel, for his kingdom was lifted up on high because of his people Israel. And David took more wives at Jerusalem, and David begat more sons and daughters. Now these are the names of his children which he had in Jerusalem. Shamua and Shobab, Nathan and Solomon, and Ibhar and Elishua and Alpalet, and Noga and Nepheg and Jephiah, and Elishema and Bileada and Eliphalet. And when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David, and David heard of it and went out against them. And the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? And wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto him, Go up, for I will deliver them into thine hand. So they came up to baal Perizim, and David smote them there. Then David said, God hath broken in upon mine enemies by mine hand, like the breaking forth of waters. Therefore they called the name of that place baal Perizim. And when they had left their gods there, David gave a commandment, and they were burned with fire. And the Philistines yet again spread themselves abroad in the valley. Therefore David inquired again of God, and God said unto him, Go not up after them, turn away from them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees, and it shall be, when thou shalt hear a sound of going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt go out to battle. For God is gone forth before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. 
David therefore did as God commanded him. And they smote the host of the Philistines, from Gibeon even to Gezer. Chapter 15 And David made him houses in the city of David, and prepared a place for the ark of God, and pitched for it a tent. Then David said, None ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites, for them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God, and to minister unto him for ever. And David gathered all Israel together to Jerusalem, to bring up the ark of the Lord unto his place, which he had prepared for it. And David assembled the children of Aaron, and the Levites. Of the sons of Kohath, Uriel the chief, and his brethren, an hundred and twenty. Of the sons of Merari, Asaiah the chief, and his brethren, two hundred and twenty. Of the sons of Gershom, Joel the chief, and his brethren, an hundred and thirty. Of the sons of Elizaphan, Shemaiah the chief, and his brethren, two hundred. Of the sons of Hebron, Elael the chief, and his brethren, fourscore. Of the sons of Uziel, Aminadab the chief, and his brethren, an hundred and twelve. And David called for Zadok, and Abiathar the priests, and for the Levites, for Uriel, Asaiah, and Joel, Shemaiah, and Eliel, and Aminadab, and said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. For because ye did not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us, for that we sought him not after the due order. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders with the staves thereon, as Moses commanded according to the word of the Lord. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers with instruments of music, psalteries, and harps and cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. So the Levites appointed Heman, the son of Joel, and of his brethren, Asaph, the son of Berechiah, and of the sons of Merari, their brethren, Ethan, the son of Cushiah, and with them their brethren of the second degree, Zechariah, Bend, and Jeaziel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Unai, Eliab, and Beniah, and Mattathiah, and Eliphaleh, and Mechniah, and Obedidim, and Jael. So the singers, Heman, Asaph, and Ethan, were appointed to sound with cymbals of brass, and Zechariah, and Aziel, and Shemiramoth, and Jael, and Unai, and Eliab, and Maaseah, and Beniah, with psalteries on Elamoth. And Metithia, and Eliphala, and Mechnia, and Obedidim, and Jael, and Azazia, with harps on the Shemineth to excel. And Chenaniah, chief of the Levites, was for song. He instructed about the song, because he was skillful. And Berechiah and Elkanah were doorkeepers for the ark. And Shebaniah, and Jehoshaphat, and Nathaniel, and Amasai, and Zechariah, and Beniah, and Eliezer, the priests, did blow with the trumpets before the ark of God. And Obedidim and Jehiah were doorkeepers for the ark. So David and the elders of Israel, with the captains over thousands, went to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the house of Obedidim with joy. And it came to pass, when God helped the Levites that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, that they offered seven bullocks and seven rams. 
for David was clothed with a robe of fine linen, and all the Levites that bear the ark, and the singers, and Chenaniah the master of the song, with the singers. David also had upon him an ephod of linen. Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord, with shouting, and with sound of the cornet, and with trumpets, and with cymbals, making a noise with psalteries and harps. And it came to pass, as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that Michal, the daughter of Saul, looking out a window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. Chapter 16 So they brought the ark of God, and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it, and they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he dealt to every one of Israel, both man and woman, to every one, a loaf of bread, and a good piece of flesh, and a flagon of wine. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord, and to record, and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. Asaph the chief, and next to him Zechariah, Jael, and Shemiramoth, and Jehiel, and Mattathiah, and Eliab, and Beniah, and Obedidim, and Jael, with psalteries and with harps. But Asaph made a sound with cymbals. Beniah also, and Jehaziel, the priests, with trumpets continually before the Ark of the Covenant of God. Then, on that day, David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works, glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham, and of his oath unto Isaac, and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when ye were but few, even a few, and strangers in it. And when they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Sing unto the Lord all the earth, Shew forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvellous works among all nations. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honour are in his presence, Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering, and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. 
the world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice, and let men say among the nations, The Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice, and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth for ever. And say ye, Save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name, and glory in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for ever and ever. And all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. So he left there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, Asaph and his brethren, to minister before the Ark continually, as every day's work required. And Obedidim, with their brethren, threescore and eight, Obedidim also, the son of Jeduthun, and Hossa, to be porters, and Zadok the priest, and his brethren, the priests, before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place that was at Gibeon, to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord, upon the altar of the burnt offering, continually morning and evening, and to do according to all that is written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded Israel, and with them Heman and Jeduthun, and the rest that were chosen, who were expressed by name, to give thanks to the Lord, because his mercy endureth for ever. And with them Heman and Jeduthun, with trumpets and cymbals for those that should make a sound, and with musical instruments of God. And the sons of Jeduthun were porters. And all the people departed, every man to his house. And David returned to bless his house. Chapter 17 Now it came to pass, as David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in an house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thine heart, for God is with thee. And it came to pass the same night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell David, my servant, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me an house to dwell in, for I have not dwelt in an house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent, and from one tabernacle to another. Wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have ye not built me an house of cedars? Now, therefore, thus shalt say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep-coat, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast walked, and have cut off all thine enemies from before thee, and have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. Also I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the beginning. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore I tell thee that the Lord will build thee an house, 
and it shall come to pass, when thy days be expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me an house, and I will establish his throne for ever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and I will not take my mercy away from him, as I took it from him that was before thee. But I will settle him in mine house, and in my kingdom for ever, and his throne shall be established for evermore. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. And David the king came and sat before the Lord, and said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is mine house, that thou hast brought me hitherto? And yet this was a small thing in thine eyes, O God, for thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast regarded me according to the estate of a man of high degree, O Lord God. What can David speak more to thee, for the honour of thy servant? For thou knowest thy servant, O Lord, for thy servant's sake, and according to thine own heart, hast thou done all this greatness, in making known all these great things? O Lord, there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem, to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness, by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt? For thy people Israel didst thou make thine own people for ever, and thou, Lord, becamest their God, Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant, and concerning his house, be established for ever, and do as thou hast said. Let it even be established, that thy name may be magnified for ever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, even a God to Israel. And let the house of David, thy servant, be established before thee. For thou, O my God, hast told thy servant that thou wilt build him an house. Therefore thy servant hath found in his heart to pray before thee. And now, Lord, thou art God, and hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Now therefore let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may be before thee for ever. For thou blessest, O Lord, and it shall be blessed for ever. Chapter 18 Now after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines, and subdued them, and he took Gath, and her towns out of the hand of the Philistines. And he smote Moab, and the Moabites became David's servants, and brought gifts. And David smote Hadarezer, king of Zobah, unto Hamath, as he went to establish his dominion by the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots, and seven thousand horsemen, and twenty thousand footmen. David also huffed all the chariot horses, but reserved of them an hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadarezer, king of Zobah, David slew of the Syrians two and twenty thousand men. Then David put garrisons in Syria, Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants, and brought gifts. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David took the shields of gold that were on the servants of Hadarezer, and brought them to Jerusalem. 
likewise from Tibhath and from Coon, cities of Hadarezer, brought David very much brass, wherewith Solomon made the brazen sea, and the pillars, and the vessels of brass. Now when Tau, king of Hamath, heard how David had smitten all the host of Hadarezer, king of Zobah, he sent Hadoram, his son, to King David, to inquire of his welfare, and to congratulate him, because he had fought against Hadarezer, and smitten him, for Hadarezer had war with Tau, and with him all manner of vessels of gold and silver and brass. Them also King David dedicated unto the Lord, with the silver and the gold that he brought from all these nations, from Edom, and from Moab, and from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines, and from Amalek. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, slew of the Edomites in the valley of Salt eighteen thousand, and he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. So David reigned over all Israel, and executed judgment and justice among all his people. And Joab the son of Zeruiah was over the host, and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahilud recorder, and Zadok the son of Ahitub, and Abimelech the son of Abiathar were the priests, and Shavsha was scribe. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Cherethites, and the Pelethites, and the sons of David were chief about the king. Chapter 19 Now it came to pass after this that Nahash the king of the children of Ammon died, and his son reigned in his stead. And David said, I will shew kindness unto Hanun the son of Nahash, because his father shewed kindness to me. And David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father. So the servants of David came into the land of the children of Ammon, to Hanun to comfort him. But the princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanun, Thinkest thou that David doth honour thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Are not his servants come unto thee for to search, and to overthrow, and to spy out the land? Wherefore Hanun took David's servants, and shaved them, and cut off their garments in the midst hard by their buttocks, and sent them away. Then there went certain, and told David how the men were served, and he sent to meet them, for the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they had made themselves odious to David, Hanun and the children of Ammon sent a thousand talents of silver to hire them chariots and horsemen out of Mesopotamia, and out of Syria Meca, and out of Zobah. So they hired thirty and two thousand chariots, and the king of Meca and his people, who came and pitched before Medeba. And the children of Ammon gathered themselves together from their cities, and came to battle. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the host of the mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array before the gate of the city. And the kings that were come were by themselves in the field. Now, when Joab saw that the battle was set against him before and behind, he chose out of all the choice of Israel, and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abishai, his brother, and they set themselves in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will help thee. 
be of good courage, and let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people, and for the cities of our God, and let the Lord do that which is good in his sight. So Joab and the people that were with him drew nigh before the Syrians unto the battle, and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, they likewise fled before Abishai his brother, and entered into the city. Then Joab came to Jerusalem, and when the Syrians saw that they were put to the worse before Israel, they sent messengers, and drew forth the Syrians that were beyond the river. And Shophak, the captain of the host of Hadarezer, went before them. And it was told David. And he gathered all Israel, and passed over Jordan, and came upon them, and set the battle in array against them. So when David had put the battle in array against the Syrians, they fought with him. But the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew of the Syrians seven thousand men which fought in chariots, and forty thousand footmen, and killed Shophak, the captain of the host. And when the servants of Hadarezer saw that they were put to the worse before Israel, they made peace with David, and became his servants. Neither would the Syrians help the children of Ammon any more. Chapter 20 And it came to pass that after the year was expired, and at the time that kings go out to battle, Joab led forth the power of the army, and wasted the country of the children of Ammon, and came and besieged Reba. But David tarried at Jerusalem. And Joab smote Reba, and destroyed it. And David took the crown of their king from off his head, and found it to weigh a talent of gold, and there were precious stones in it, and it was set upon David's head. And he brought also exceeding much spoil out of the city, and he brought out the people that were in it, and cut them with saws, and with harrows of iron, and with axes. Even so dealt David with all the cities of the children of Ammon. And David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, after this, that there arose war at Gezer with the Philistines, at which time Sibachai the Hushathite slew Sepai, that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. And there was war again with the Philistines. And Elhanan, the son of Jair, slew Lamai, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, whose spear staff was like a weaver's beam. And yet again there was war at Gath, where was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot, and he also was the son of the giant. But when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, David's brother, slew him. These were born unto the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Chapter 21 And Satan stood up against Israel, and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go, number Israel from Beersheba, even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me, that I may know it. And Joab answered, the Lord make his people an hundred times, so many more as they be. But, my lord the king, are they not all my lord's servants? Why then doth my lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? Nevertheless, 
the king's word prevailed against Joab. Wherefore Joab departed, and went throughout all Israel, and came to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David, and all they of Israel were a thousand thousand, and an hundred thousand men that drew sword. And Judah was four hundred threescore, and ten thousand men that drew sword. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Joab. And God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly, because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And the Lord spake unto Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things, choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Choose thee, either three years famine, or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while that the sword of thine enemies overtaketh thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now, therefore, Advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, for very great are his mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel seventy thousand men. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it, and as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And David lifted up his eyes, and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven, having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. And David said unto God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I it is that have sinned and done evil, indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Lord my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not on thy people that they should be plagued. Then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David, that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And David went up at the saying of Gad, which he spake in the name of the Lord. And Ornan turned back and saw the angel and his four sons with them hid themselves. Now Ornan was threshing wheat. And as David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David, and went out of the threshing floor, and bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. 
thou shalt grant it me for the full price that the plague may be stayed from the people and ornan said unto david take it to thee and let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes lo i give thee the oxen also for burnt offerings and the threshing instruments for wood and the wheat for the meat offering i give it all and king david said to ornan nay but i will verily buy it for the full price for i will not take that which is thine for the lord nor offer burnt offerings without cost so david gave to ornan for the place six hundred shekels of gold by weight and david built there an altar unto the lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the lord and he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering and the lord commanded the angel and he put up his sword into the sheath thereof at that time when david saw that the lord had answered him in the threshing floor of ornan the jebusite then he sacrificed there for the tabernacle of the lord which moses made in the wilderness and the altar of the burnt offering were at that season in the high place at gibeon but david could not go before it to inquire of god for he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of the lord chapter twenty two then david said this is the house of the lord god and this is the altar of the burnt offering for israel and david commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of israel and he set masons to hew wrought stones to build the house of god and david prepared iron in abundance for the nails for the doors of the gates and for the joinings and brass in abundance without weight also cedar trees in abundance for the zidonians and they of tyre brought much cedar wood to david and david said solomon my son is young and tender and the house that is to be builded for the lord must be exceeding magnifical of fame and of glory throughout all countries i will therefore now make preparation for it so david prepared abundantly before his death then he called for solomon his son and charged him to build an house for the lord god of israel and david said to solomon my son as for me it was in my mind to build an house unto the name of the lord my god but the word of the lord came to me saying thou hast shed blood abundantly and hast made great wars thou shalt not build an house unto my name because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight behold a son shall be born to thee who shall be a man of rest and i will give him rest from all his enemies round about for his name shall be solomon and i will give peace and quietness unto israel in his days he shall build an house for my name and he shall be my son and i will be his father and i will establish the throne of his kingdom over israel for ever now my son the lord be with thee and prosper thou and build the house of the lord thy god as he hath said of thee only the lord give thee wisdom and understanding and give thee charge concerning israel that thou mayest keep the law of the lord thy god then shalt thou prosper if thou takest heed to fulfil the statutes and judgments which the lord charged moses with concerning israel 
be strong and of a good courage dread not nor be dismayed now behold in my trouble i have prepared for the house of the lord an hundred thousand talents of gold and a thousand thousand talents of silver and of brass and iron without weight for it is in abundance timber also and stone have i prepared and thou mayst add thereto moreover there are workmen with thee in abundance hewers and workers of stone and timber and all manner of cunning men for every manner of work of the gold the silver and the brass and the iron there is no number arise therefore and be doing and the lord be with thee david also commanded all the princes of israel to help solomon his son saying is not the lord your god with you and hath he not given you rest on every side for he hath given the inhabitants of the land into mine hand and the land is subdued before the lord and before his people now set your heart and your soul to seek the lord your god arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary of the lord god to bring the ark of the covenant of the lord and the holy vessels of god into the house that is to be built to the name of the lord end of section 42section forty three of the holy bible the king james version first chronicles chapters twenty three to twenty nine this recording is in the public domain recorded by michael armenta chapter twenty three so when david was old and full of days he made solomon his son king over israel and he gathered together all the princes of israel with the priests and the Levites. Now the Levites were numbered from the age of thirty and upward, and by their number, by their poles, man by man, was thirty and eight thousand, of which twenty and four thousand were to set forward the work of the house of the Lord, and six thousand were officers and judges. Moreover, four thousand were porters, and four thousand praised the Lord with the instruments which I made, said David, to praise therewith. And David divided them into courses among the sons of Lephi, namely, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Of the Gershonites were Laden and Shimei. The sons of Laden, the chief was Jehiel and Zetham and Joel, three. The sons of Shimei Shalomith and Hazel and Haran, three. These were the chief of the fathers of Laden. And the sons of Shimei were Jehath, Zena, and Jeush, and Bariah. These four were the sons of Shimei. And Jehath was the chief, and Ziza the second. But Jeush and Bariah had not many sons, therefore they were in one reckoning according to their father's house. The sons of Kohath, Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. 4. The sons of Amram, Aaron, and Moses. And Aaron was separated that he should sanctify the most holy things, he and his sons, for ever, to burn incense before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name for ever. Now, Concerning Moses, the man of God, his sons were named of the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses were Gershom and Eliezer. Of the sons of Gershom, Shebuel was the chief. And the sons of Eliezer were Rehabiah the chief. And Eliezer had none other sons. But the sons of Rehabiah were very many. Of the sons of Ishar, 
Shalomith the chief. Of the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechamim the fourth. Of the sons of Uziel, Micah the first, and Josiah the second. The sons of Merari, Melai and Mushai. The sons of Melai, Eliezer and Kish. And Eliezer died, and had no sons, but daughters. And their brethren, the sons of Kish, took them. The sons of Mishai, Melai and Eder and Jeremoth. 3. These were the sons of Levi, after the house of their fathers, even the chief of the fathers, as they were counted by number of names by their poles, that did the work for the service of the house of the Lord, from the age of twenty years and upward. For David said, The Lord God of Israel hath given rest unto his people, that they may dwell in Jerusalem for ever. And also unto the Levites they shall no more carry the tabernacle, nor any vessels of it for the service thereof. For by the last words of David, the Levites were numbered from twenty years old and above, because their office was to wait on the sons of Aaron for the service of the house of the Lord in the courts and in the chambers, and in the purifying of all holy things, and the work of the service of the house of God, both for the shewbread, and for the fine flour for meat offering, and for the unleavened cakes, and for that which is baked in the pan, and for that which is fried, and for all manner of measure and size, and to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord, and likewise at even, and to offer all burnt sacrifices unto the Lord in the Sabbaths, in the new moons, and on the set feasts, by number, according to the order commanded unto them, continually before the Lord, and that they should keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the charge of the holy place, and the charge of the sons of Aaron their brethren, in the service of the house of the Lord. Chapter 24 Now these are the divisions of the sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, Eliezer and Ithamar. Both Nadab and Abihu died before their father, and had no children. Therefore Eliezer and Ithamar executed the priest's office. And David distributed them, both Zadok of the sons of Eliezer, and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithmar, according to their offices in their service. And there were more chief men found of the sons of Eliezer, than of the sons of Ithamar, and thus were they divided. Among the sons of Eliezer there were sixteen chief men of the house of their fathers, and eight among the sons of Ithamar, according to the house of their fathers. Thus were they divided by lot, one sort with another, for the governors of the sanctuary and governors of the house of God were of the sons of Eliezer and of the sons of Ithamar. And Shemaiah, the son of Nethanel, the scribe, one of the Levites, wrote them before the king and the princes, and Zadok the priest, and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar, and before the chief of the fathers of the priests and Levites, one principal household being taken for Eleazar, and one taken for Ithamar. Now the first lot came forth to Jehoiarib, the second to Jediah, the third to Harim, the fourth to Seorim, the fifth to Malchijah, the sixth to Mijamin, the seventh to Hakaz, the eighth to Abisha, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shechaniah, the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jacob, the thirteenth to Hupa, the fourteenth to Jeshebiab, the fifteenth to Bilga, the sixteenth to Imer, the seventeenth to Hazir, the eighteenth to Aphesus, the nineteenth to Pethahiah, the twentieth to Jehezekel, the one and twentieth to Jachin, the two and twentieth to Gamul, the three and twentieth to Deliah, the fourth and twentieth to Messiah. 
These were the orderings of them, in their service, to come into the house of the Lord, according to their manner, under Aaron their father, as the Lord God of Israel had commanded them. And the rest of the sons of Levi were these. Of the sons of Amram, Shubael, of the sons of Shubael, Jedeiah. Concerning Rehabiah, of the sons of Rehabiah, the first was Aishia, of the Israelites, Shelomoth, of the sons of Shelomoth, Jehath, and the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, Jacomiam the fourth, of the sons of Uziel, Micah, of the sons of Micah, Shemir. The brother of Micah was Isaiah, of the sons of Isaiah, Zechariah. The sons of Merari were Melai and Mishai, the sons of Jeziah, Bino. The sons of Merari, by Jeziah, Bino and Shoham, and Zachor and Ebri. Of Melai came Eliezer, who had no sons. Concerning Kish, the son of Kish was Jeramiel. The sons also of Mishai, Melai and Eder and Jeremoth. These were the sons of the Levites after the house of their fathers. These likewise cast lots over against their brethren, the sons of Aaron, in the presence of David the king, and Zadok, and Ahimelech, and the chief of the fathers of the priests and Levites, even the principal fathers, over against their younger brethren. Chapter 25 Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph, and of Heman, and of Jeduthun, who should prophesy with harps, with psalteries, and with cymbals. And the number of the workmen, according to their service, was, of the sons of Asaph, Zachor, and Joseph, and Nethaniah, and Asarela, the sons of Asaph under the hands of Asaph, which prophesied according to the order of the king. Of Jeduthun. The sons of Jeduthun, Gedaliah and Zerai and Jeshiah, Hashabiah and Mattathiah. Six, under the hands of their father Jeduthun, who prophesied with a harp, to give thanks and to praise the Lord. Of Heman, the sons of Heman, Bukiah, Mattathiah, Uziel, Shebuel, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hanani, Eliatha, Gedalti, and Romamtiazer, Josh Bekesha, Malathi, Hothir, and Mahazioth. All these were the sons of Haman, the king's seer, in the words of God, to lift up the horn. And God gave to Haman fourteen sons and three daughters. All these were under the hands of their father for song in the house of the Lord, with cymbals, psalteries, and harps, for the service of the house of God, according to the king's order to Asaph, Jeduthun, and Heman. So the number of them with their brethren that were instructed in the songs of the Lord, even all that were cunning, was two hundred fourscore and eight, and they cast lots ward against ward, as well the small as the great, the teacher as the scholar. Now the first lot came forth for Asaph to Joseph, the second to Gedaliah, who with his brethren and sons were twelve, the third to Zachur, he, his sons and his brethren were twelve, the fourth to Isri, he, his sons, and his brethren were twelve. The fifth to Nethaniah, he, his sons, and his brethren were twelve. The sixth to Bukiah, he, his sons, and his brethren were twelve. The seventh to Jesherela, he, his sons, and his brethren were twelve. The eighth to Jeshaiah, he, his sons, and his brethren were twelve. The ninth to Mataniah, he, his sons, and his brethren, were twelve. The tenth to Shimei, he, his sons, and his brethren, were twelve. The eleventh to Azareel, 
he his sons and his brethren were twelve the twelfth to hashabiah he his sons and his brethren were twelve the thirteenth to shubael he his sons and his brethren were twelve the fourteenth to mattathiah he his sons and his brethren were twelve the fifteenth to jeremoth he his sons and his brethren were twelve the sixteenth to hananiah he his sons and his brethren were twelve the seventeenth to joshbekashah he his sons and his brethren were twelve the eighteenth to hanani he his sons and his brethren were twelve the nineteenth to malathi he his sons and his brethren were twelve the twentieth to eliatha he his sons and his brethren were twelve the one and twentieth to hothir he his sons and his brethren were twelve the two and twentieth to gedaltai he his sons and his brethren were twelve the three and twentieth to mahazioth he his sons and his brethren were twelve the fourth and twentieth to romamteaser he his sons and his brethren were twelve chapter twenty six concerning the division of the porters of the korhites was meshelemiah the son of kore of the sons of asaph and the sons of meshelemiah were zechariah the firstborn jediel the second zebediah the third jathniel the fourth elam the fifth johanan the sixth eleonai the seventh moreover the sons of obed edom were shemiah the firstborn jehazabad the second joah the third and sechar the fourth and nethaniel the fifth amiel the sixth issachar the seventh peulthai the eighth for god blessed him also unto shemiah his son were sons born that ruled throughout the house of their father for they were mighty men of valour the sons of shemiah othnai and raphael and obed elzabad whose brethren were strong men elihu and semachiah all these were the sons of obed edom they and their sons and their brethren able men for strength for the service were threescore and two of obedidom and meshelemiah had sons and brethren strong men eighteen also hosa of the children of merari had sons simrai the chief for though he was not the first-born yet his father made him the chief hilkiah the second tebeliah the third zechariah the fourth all the sons and brethren of hosa were thirteen among these were the divisions of the porters even among the chief men having wards one against another to minister in the house of the lord and they cast lots as well the small as the great according to the house of their fathers for every gate and the lot eastward fell to shelemiah then for zechariah his son a wise counsellor they cast lots and his lot came out northward to obededom southward and to his sons the house of asupim to shupim and hosa the lot came forth westward with the gate shalaketh by the causeway of the going up ward against ward eastward were six levites northward four a day southward four a day and toward asupim two and two at parbar westward four at the causeway and two at parbar these are the divisions of the porters among the sons of kore and among the sons of merari and of the levites ahijah was over the treasures of the house of god and over the treasures of the dedicated things as concerning the sons of laden the sons of the gershonite laden chief fathers even of laden the gershonite were jehielai jehielai the sons of jehielai zatham 
and Joel his brother, which were over the treasures of the house of the Lord. Of the Amramites, and of the Isharites, the Hebronites, and the Uzielites. And Shebuel the son of Gershom, the son of Moses, was ruler of the treasures. And his brethren, by Eliezer, Rehabiah his son, and Jeshiah his son, and Joram his son, and Zechrai his son, and Shalomith his son. Which Shalomith and his brethren were over all the treasures of the dedicated things, which David the king, and the chief fathers, the captains over thousands and hundreds, and the captains of the host, had dedicated. Out of the spoils, won in battles, did they dedicate to maintain the house of the Lord. And all that Samuel the seer, and Saul the son of Kish, and Abner the son of Ner, and Joab the son of Zeruiah, had dedicated. And whosoever had dedicated anything, it was under the hand of Shelomith and of his brethren. Of the Isherites, Chenaniah and his son were for the outward business over Israel, for officers and judges. And of the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his brethren, men of valor, a thousand and seven hundred were officers among them of Israel on this side Jordan, westward in all the business of the Lord and in the service of the king. Among the Hebronites were Jerijah the chief, even among the Hebronites, according to the generations of his fathers. In the fortieth year of the reign of David they were sought for, and there were found among them mighty men of valor at Jazer of Gilead. And his brethren, men of a valor, were two thousand and seven hundred chief fathers, whom King David made rulers over the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, for every matter pertaining to God and to affairs of the king. Chapter 27 now the children of Israel, after their number, to wit, the chief fathers and captains of thousands and hundreds, and their officers that served the king in any matter of the courses, which came in and went out month by month throughout all the months of the year, of every course were twenty and four thousand. Over the first course for the first month was Jashobiam, the son of Zabdiel, and in his course were twenty and four thousand of the children of Perez, was the chief of all the captains of the host for the first month. And over the course of the second month was Dodai, and Ahohite, and of his course was Mikloth, also the ruler. In his course, likewise, were twenty and four thousand. The third captain of the host for the third month was Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, a chief priest, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. This is that Beniah, who was mighty among the thirty, and above the thirty. And in his course was Amizabad, his son. The fourth captain for the fourth month was Asahel, the brother of Joab, and Zebediah, his son after him. And in his course were twenty and four thousand. The fifth captain for the fifth month was Shamhuth, the Israelite and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The sixth captain for the sixth month was Ira, the son of Ekesh the Tekoite, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The seventh captain for the seventh month was Helaz the Pelonite, of the children of Ephraim, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The eighth captain for the eighth month was Sibachai the Hushathite, of the Sarhites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The ninth captain for the ninth month was Abiezer, the Anetothite, of the Benjamites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The tenth captain for the tenth month was Meharai, the Netophathite, of the Zarhites, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The eleventh captain for the eleventh month was Beniah, the Parathonite, of the children of Ephraim, 
and in his course were twenty and four thousand. The twelfth captain for the twelfth month was Haldai, the Natophathite, of Othniel, and in his course were twenty and four thousand. Furthermore, over the tribes of Israel, the ruler of the Reubenites was Eliezer, the son of Zikri, of the Simeonites, Shephatiah, the son of Mekah, of the Levites, Hashabiah, the son of Kemuel, of the Aaronites, Zadok, of Judah, Elihu, one of the brethren of David, of Issachar, Omri, the son of Michael, of Zebulun, Ismiah, the son of Obadiah, of Naphtali, Jeremoth, the son of Azrael, of the children of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Azizia, of the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joel, the son of Pediah, of the half-tribe of Manasseh, in Gilead, Edo, the son of Zechariah, of Benjamin, Jaziel, the son of Abner, of Dan, Azariel, the son of Jeroham. These were the princes of the tribes of Israel. But David took not the number of them from twenty years old and under, because the Lord had said he would increase Israel like to the stars of heaven. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, began to number, but he finished not, because there fell wrath for it against Israel. Neither was the number put in the account of the chronicles of King David. And over the king's treasures was Azmaveth, the son of Adiel. And over the storehouses in the fields, in the cities, and in the villages, and in the castles was Jehonathan, the son of Uzziah. And over them that did the work of the field, for tillage of the ground, was Ezrai the son of Chelub. And over the vineyards was Shimei the Ramathite. Over the increase of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zabdi the Shifmite. And over the olive trees and the sycamore trees that were in the low plains was Balhanan the Gedarite. And over the cellars of oil was Joash. And over the herds that fed in Sharon was Shitrai the Sharonite. And over the herds that were in the valleys was Shaphat the son of Adlai. Over the camels also was Obil the Ishmaelite. And over the asses was Jedeia the Maranathite. And over the flocks was Jesus the Hagarite. All these were the rulers of the substance which was King David's. All these were the rulers of the substance which was King David's. Also, Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counsellor, a wise man, and a scribe. And Jehiel, the son of Hakmonai, was with the king's sons. And Ahitophel was the king's counsellor, and Hushai the archite was the king's companion. And after Ahitophel was Jehoiada, the son of Benaiah, and Abiathar. And the general of the king's army was Joab. Chapter 28 And David assembled all the princes of Israel, the princes of the tribes, and the captains of the companies that ministered to the king by course, and the captains over the thousands, and captains over the hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possession of the king, and of his sons, with the officers, and with the mighty men, and with all the valiant men, unto Jerusalem. Then David the king stood up upon his feet, and said, Hear me, my brethren, and my people. As for me, I had in mine heart to build an house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and for the footstool of our God, and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. Howbeit, the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel for ever, for he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah 
the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom for ever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments, as at this day. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land, and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you for ever. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart, and with a willing mind, for the Lord searcheth all hearts, and understandeth all the imagination of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off for ever. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary. Be strong, and do it. Then David gave to Solomon, his son, the pattern of the porch, and of the houses thereof, and of the treasures thereof, and of the upper chambers thereof, and of the inner parlours thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat, and the pattern of all that he had by the Spirit, of the courts of the house of the Lord, and of all the chambers round about, of the treasuries of the house of God, and of the treasuries of the dedicated things. Also for the courses of the priests and the Levites, and for all the work of the service of the house of the Lord, for all the vessels of service in the house of the Lord. He gave of gold by weight for things of gold, for all instruments of all manner of service, silver also for all instruments of silver by weight, for all instruments of every kind of service, even the weight for the candlesticks of gold, and for their lamps of gold, by weight for every candlestick, and for the lamps thereof, and for the candlesticks of silver by weight, both for the candlestick, and also for the lamps thereof, according to the use of every candlestick. And by weight he gave gold for the tables of shewbread, for every table, and likewise silver for the tables of silver, also pure gold for the flesh hooks, and the bowls, and the cups, and for the golden basins, he gave gold by weight for every basin, and likewise silver by weight for every basin of silver, and for the altar of incense refined gold by weight, and gold for the pattern of the chariot of the cherubims that spread out their wings, and covered the ark of the covenants of the Lord. All this, said David, the Lord made me understand, in writing by his hand upon me, even all the works of this pattern. And David said to Solomon, his son, Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. And behold, the courses of the priests and the Levites, even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God. And there shall be with thee for all manner of workmanship every willing, skilful man, for any manner of surface, 
also the princes, and all the people will be wholly at thy commandment. Chapter 29 Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great. For the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for things to be made of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and the brass for things of brass, the iron for things of iron, and wood for things of wood, onyx stones, and stones to be set, glistering stones, and of diverse colors, and all manner of precious stones, and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of mine own proper good, of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God, over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, even three thousand talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls of the houses withal. The gold for things of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of artificers. And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? The chief of the fathers, and the princes of the tribes of Israel, and the captains of thousands and of hundreds, with the rulers of the king's work, offered willingly, and gave for the servants of the house of God, of gold, five thousand talents, and ten thousand drams, and of silver, ten thousand talents, and of brass, eighteen thousand talents, and one hundred thousand talents of iron. And they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord, by the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced, for that they offered willingly, because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, for ever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness, and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven, and in the earth, is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honour come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I, and what is my people, that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee an house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand and is all thine own. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart, and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these things, and now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel our fathers, 
keep this for ever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people and prepare their heart unto me and give unto solomon my son a perfect heart to keep thy commandments thy testimonies and thy statutes and to do all these things and to build the palace for the which i have made provision and david said to all the congregation now bless the lord your god and all the congregation blessed the lord god of their fathers and bowed down their heads and worshipped the lord and the king and they sacrificed sacrifices unto the lord and offered burnt offerings unto the lord on the morrow after that day even a thousand bullocks a thousand rams and a thousand lambs with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all israel and did eat and drink before the lord on that day with great gladness and they made solomon the son of david king the second time and anointed him unto the lord to be the chief governor and zadok to be priest then solomon sat on the throne of the lord as king instead of david his father and prospered and all israel obeyed him and all the princes and the mighty men and all the sons likewise of king david submitted themselves unto solomon the king and the lord magnified solomon exceedingly in the sight of all israel and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in israel thus david the son of jesse reigned over all israel and the time that he reigned over israel was forty years seven years reigned he in hebron and thirty and three years reigned he in jerusalem and he died in a good old age full of days riches and honour and solomon his son reigned in his stead now the acts of david the king first and last behold they are written in the book of samuel the seer and in the book of nathan the prophet and in the book of gad the seer with all his reign and his might and the times that went over him and over israel and over all the kingdoms of the countries and of section forty three Section 44 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Second Chronicles, chapters 1 to 16. This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Michael Armenta. Chapter 1. And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him, and magnified him exceedingly. Then Solomon spake unto all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every governor in all Israel, the chief of the fathers. So Solomon and all the congregation with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for there was the tabernacle of the congregation of God, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. But the ark of God, that David brought up from Kirjath jearim to the place which David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Moreover, the brazen altar that Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord, and Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, 
which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. In that night did God appear unto Solomon, and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast shewed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people, like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge, that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this, thy people, that is so great? And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honour, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honour, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. Then Solomon came from his journey to the high place that was at Gibeon, to Jerusalem, from before the tabernacle of the congregation, and reigned over Israel. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, which he placed in the chariot cities, and with the king at Jerusalem. And the king made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenteous as stones, and cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt, and linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. And they fetched up and brought forth out of Egypt a chariot for six hundred shekels of silver, and an horse for an hundred and fifty, and so brought they out horses for all the kings of the Hittites, and for the kings of Syria, by their means. Chapter 2 And Solomon determined to build an house for the name of the Lord, and an house for his kingdom. And Solomon told out threescore and ten thousand men to bear burdens, and fourscore thousand to hew in the mountain, and three thousand and six hundred to oversee them. And Solomon sent to Huram the king of Tyre, saying, As thou didst deal with David my father, and didst send him cedars to build him an house to dwell therein, even so deal with me. Behold, I build an house to the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him, and to burn before him sweet incense and for the continual shewbread, and for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, and on the new moons, and on the solemn feasts of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance for ever to Israel, and the house which I build is great, for great is our God above all gods. But who is able to build him an house, seeing the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him? Who am I, then, that I should build him an house, save only to burn sacrifice before him? Send me now, therefore, a man cunning to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in iron and in purple and crimson and blue, and that can skill to grave with the cunning men that are with me in Judah and in Jerusalem, whom David my father did provide. Send me also cedar trees, fir trees, and algum trees, out of Lebanon. For I know that thy servants can skill to cut timber in Lebanon. And behold, my servants shall be with thy servants, even to prepare me timber in abundance. 
for the house which i am about to build shall be wonderful great and behold i will give to thy servants the hewers that cut timber twenty thousand measures of beaten wheat and twenty thousand measures of barley and twenty thousand baths of wine and twenty thousand baths of oil then huram the king of tyre answered in writing which he sent to solomon because the lord hath loved his people he hath made thee king over them huram said moreover blessed be the lord god of israel that made heaven and earth who hath given to david the king a wise son endued with prudence and understanding that might build an house for the lord and an house for his kingdom and now i have sent a cunning man endued with understanding of huram my father's the son of a woman of the daughters of dan and his father was a man of tyre skilful to work in gold and in silver in brass in iron in stone and in timber in purple in blue and in fine linen and in crimson also to grave any manner of graving and to find out every device which shall be put to him with thy cunning men and with the cunning men of my lord david thy father now therefore the wheat and the barley the oil and the wine which my lord hath spoken of let him send unto his servants and we will cut wood out of lebanon as much as thou shalt need and we will bring it to thee in floats by sea to joppa and thou shalt carry it up to jerusalem and solomon numbered all the strangers that were in the land of israel after the numbering wherewith david his father had numbered them and they were found an hundred and fifty thousand and three thousand and six hundred and he set threescore and ten thousand of them to be bearers of burdens and fourscore thousand to be hewers in the mountain and three thousand and six hundred overseers to set the people a work chapter three then solomon began to build the house of the lord at jerusalem in mount moriah where the lord appeared unto david his father in the place that david had prepared in the threshing-floor of ornan the jebusite and he began to build in the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign now these are the things wherein solomon was instructed for the building of the house of god the length by cubits after the first measure was threescore cubits and the breadth twenty cubits and the porch that was in the front of the house the length of it was according to the breadth of the house twenty cubits and the height was an hundred and twenty and he overlaid it within with pure gold and the greater house he sealed with fir tree which he overlaid with fine gold and set thereon palm trees and chains and he garnished the house with precious stones for beauty and the gold was gold of parvaim he overlaid also the house the beams the posts and the walls thereof and the doors thereof with gold and graved cherubims on the walls and he made the most holy house the length whereof was according to the breadth of the house twenty cubits and the breadth thereof twenty cubits and he overlaid it with fine gold amounting to six hundred talents and the weight of the nails was fifty shekels of gold and he overlaid the upper chambers with gold and in the most holy house he made two cherubims of image work and overlaid them with gold and the wings of the cherubims were twenty cubits long one wing of the one cherub was five cubits reaching to the wall of the house and the other wing was likewise five cubits reaching to the wing of the other cherub and one wing of the other cherub was five cubits reaching to the wall of the house and the other wing was five cubits also joining to the wing of the other cherub 
the wings of these cherubims spread themselves forth twenty cubits and they stood on their feet and their faces were inward and he made the veil of blue and purple and crimson and fine linen and wrought cherubims thereon also he made before the house two pillars of thirty and five cubits high and the chapiter that was on the top of each of them was five cubits and he made chains as in the oracle and put them on the chains and he reared up the pillars before the temple one on the right hand and the other on the left and called the name of that on the right hand jachin and the name of that on the left boaz chapter five thus all the work that solomon made for the house of the lord was finished and solomon brought in all the things that david his father had dedicated and the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of god then solomon assembled the elders of israel and all the heads of the tribes the chief of the fathers of the children of israel unto jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of the lord out of the city of david which is zion wherefore all the men of israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast which was in the seventh month and all the elders of israel came and the levites took up the ark and they brought up the ark and the tabernacle of the congregation and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle these did the priests and the levites bring up also king solomon and all the congregation of israel that were assembled unto him before the ark sacrificed sheep and oxen which could not be told nor numbered for multitude and the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the lord unto his place to the oracle of the house into the most holy place even unto the wings of the cherubims for the cherubims spread forth their wings over the place of the ark and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof above and they drew out the staves of the ark that the ends of the staves were seen from the ark before the oracle but they were not seen without and there it is unto this day there was nothing in the ark save the two tables which moses put therein at horeb when the lord made a covenant with the children of israel when they came out of egypt and it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course also the levites which were the singers all of them of asaph of heman of jeduthun with their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen having cymbals and psalteries and harps stood at the east end of the altar and with them an hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets it came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the lord and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the lord saying for he is good for his mercy endureth for ever that then the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the lord so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the lord had filled the house of god chapter six then said solomon the lord hath said that he would dwell in the thick darkness but i have built an house of habitation for thee and a place for thy dwelling for ever and the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of israel 
and all the congregation of Israel stood, and he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build an house in, that my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build an house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, For as much as it was in thine heart to build an house for my name, thou didst well in that it was in thine heart. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house. But thy son, which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken. For I am risen up in the room of David my father, and am set on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And in it have I put the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, that he made with the children of Israel. And he stood before the altar of the Lord, in his presence of all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands. For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long, and five cubits broad, and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court. And upon it he stood, and kneeled down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven, and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the heaven, nor in the earth, which keepest covenant, and shewest mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Thou which hast kept with thy servant David, my father, that which thou hast promised him, and spakest with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as it is this day. Now, therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, that which thou hast promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit upon the throne of Israel, yet so that thy children take heed to their walk, to walk in my law, as thou hast walked before me. Now then, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house which I have built. Have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant, and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry of the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee, that thine eyes may be open upon this house, day and night, upon the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth toward this place. Hearken, therefore, unto the supplications of thy servant, and of thy people Israel, which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. If a man sin against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou from heaven, and do, and judge thy servants, by requiting the wicked, by recompensing his way upon his own head, and by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. And if thy people, Israel, be put to the worse before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return and confess thy name, and pray and make supplication before thee in this house, 
then hear thou from the heavens, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest to them, and to their fathers. When the heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, yet if they pray toward this place, and confess thy name, and turn from their sin when thou dost afflict them, then hear thou from heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, when thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk, and send rain upon thy land, which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. If there be dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be blasting or mildew, locusts or caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore, or whatsoever sickness there be, then what prayer, or what supplication soever shall be made of any man, or of all thy people Israel, when every one shall know his own sore and his own grief, and shall spread forth his hands in this house, then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and render unto every man, according unto all his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men, that they may fear thee, to walk in thy ways, so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. More soever, concerning the stranger, which is not of thy people Israel, but is come from a far country for thy great name's sake, and thy mighty hand, and thy stretched out arm. If they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth thee for, that all the people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee, as doth thy people Israel and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. If thy people go out to war against their enemies, by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee toward this city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from the heavens their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. For if they sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not. And thou be angry with them, and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives unto a land far off or near. Yet, if they bethink themselves in the land, whither they are carried captive, and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly, if they return to thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whither they have carried them captives, and pray toward their land which thou gavest unto their fathers, and toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, my God, let, I beseech thee, thine eyes be open, and thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength, let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David thy servant. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord, 
because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement, and worshipped, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth for ever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen, and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. The priests waited on their offices. The Levites also, with instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord, because his mercy endureth for ever, when David praised by their ministry. And the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings, and the meat offerings, and the fat. Also at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. And on the three-and-twentieth day of the seventh month he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart, for the goodness that the Lord had shewed unto David, and to Solomon, and to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord, and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord, and in his own house, he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among thy people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there for ever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me, as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shalt observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of my kingdom, according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away, and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them by the roots out of my land which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to every one that passeth by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land, and unto this house? And it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. Chapter 9 And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem with a very great company. 
and camels that bear spices, and gold in abundance, and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions, and there was nothing hid from Solomon which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, his cup-bearers also, and their apparel, and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, it was a true report which I heard in mine own land of thine acts, and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not their words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the one half of the greatness of thy wisdom was not told me, for thou exceedest the fame that I heard. Happy are thy men, and happy are these thy servants which stand continually before thee, and hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee to set thee on his throne, to be king for the Lord thy God, because thy God loved Israel to establish them for ever. Therefore made he the king over them, to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices great abundance and precious stones. Neither was there any such spice as the queen of Sheba gave King Solomon. And the servants also of Huram, and the servants of Solomon, which brought gold from Ophir, brought algum trees and precious stones. And the king made of the algum trees terraces to the house of the Lord, and to the king's palace, and harps and psalteries for singers, and there was none such seen before in the land of Judah. And King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked, beside that which she had brought unto the king. So she turned and went away to her own land, she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred and three score and six talents of gold, beside that which chapmen and merchants brought. And all the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. And King Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold, six hundred shekels of beaten gold went to one target, and three hundred shields made he of beaten gold, Three hundred shekels of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory, and overlaid it with pure gold. And there were six steps to the throne, with a footstool of gold, which were fastened to the throne, and stays on each side of the sitting place, and two lions standing by the stays. And twelve lions stood there on the one side, and on the other upon the six steps. There was not the like made in any kingdom. And all the drinking vessels of King Solomon were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was not any thing accounted of in the days of Solomon. For the king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Huram. Every three years once came the ships of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver, ivories and apes and peacocks. And King Solomon passed all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom that God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver and vessels of gold, and raiment, harness, and spices, horses, and mules, a rate year by year. And Solomon had four thousand stalls for horses and chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he bestowed in the chariot cities, and with the king at Jerusalem. 
and he reigned over all the kings from the silver, even unto the land of the Philistines, and to the borders of Egypt. The king made silver in Jerusalem as stones, and cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the low plains in abundance. And they brought unto Solomon horses out of Egypt and out of all lands. Now the rest of the Acts of Solomon, first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite, and in the visions of Edo the seer, against Jeroboam the son of Nebat? And Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers. And he was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 10 And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for to Shechem were all Israel come to make him king. And it came to pass, when Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who was in Egypt, whither he fled from the presence of Solomon the king, heard it, that Jeroboam returned out of Egypt. And they sent and called him. So Jeroboam and all Israel came and spake to Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore ease thou somewhat the grievous servitude of thy father, and his heavy yoke that he put upon us, and we will serve thee. And he said unto them, Come again unto me after three days. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men that had stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, saying, What counsel give ye me to return answer to this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou be kind to this people, and please them, and speak good words to them, they will be thy servants for ever. But he forsook the counsel which the old man gave him, and took counsel with the young men that were brought up with him, that stood before him. And he said unto them, What advice give ye, that we may return answer to this people, which have spoken to me, saying, Ease somewhat the yoke that my father did put upon us. And the young men that were brought up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou answer the people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it somewhat lighter for us. Thou shalt say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. For whereas my father put a heavy yoke upon you, I will put more to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day, as the king bade, saying, Come again to me on the third day. And the king answered them roughly, And King Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the old men, and answered them after the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add thereto. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was not of God, that the Lord might perform his word, which he spake by the hand of Ahijah, the Shilonite, to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. And when all Israel saw that the king would not hearken unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? And we have none inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to your tents, O Israel. And now, David, see to thine own house. So all Israel went to their tents. But as for the children of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadoram, that was over the tribute, 
and the children of Israel stoned him with stones, that he died. But King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot, to flee to Jerusalem. And Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. Chapter 11 And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he gathered of the house of Judah and Benjamin an hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. But the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren. Return every man to his house, for this thing is done of me. And they obeyed the words of the Lord, and returned from going against Jerusalem. And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem, and built cities for defense in Judah. He built even Bethlehem, and Etam, and Tekoa, and Bethzur, and Shoko, and Adullam, and Gath, and Merisha, and Zaph, and Adoram, and Lachish, and Azekah, and Zorah, and Ajalon, and Hebron, which are in Judah, and in Benjamin fenced cities. And he fortified the strongholds, and put captains in them, and store of victual, and of oil and wine. And in every several city he put shields and spears, and made them exceeding strong, having Judah and Benjamin on his side. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of all their coasts. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possession, and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. And he ordained him priests for the high places, and for the devils, and for the calves which he had made. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah, and made Rehoboam the son of Solomon strong three years. For three years they walked in the way of David and Solomon. And Rehoboam took him Mahalath, the daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David, to wife, and Abihail, the daughter of Eliab, the son of Jesse, which bare him children, Jeush, and Shemariah, and Zaham. And after her he took Mekah, the daughter of Absalom, which bare him Abijah, and Etai and Ziza, and Shalomith. And Rehoboam loved Mekah, the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and his concubines. For he took eighteen wives and threescore concubines, and begat twenty and eight sons and threescore daughters. And Rehoboam made Abijah, the son of Mekah, the chief, to be ruler among his brethren, for he thought to make him king. And he dealt wisely, and dispersed all of his children throughout all the countries of Judah and Benjamin, unto every fenced city. And he gave them victual in abundance, and he desired many wives. Chapter 12 And it came to pass, when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself, he forsook the law of the Lord, and all Israel with him. And it came to pass, that in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem, because they had transgressed against the Lord, with twelve hundred chariots and threescore thousand horsemen. And the people were without a number that came with him out of Egypt, the Lupims, the Sukims and the Ethiopians. 
and he took the fenced cities which pertained to Judah, and came to Jerusalem. Then came Shemaiah, the prophet to Rehoboam, and to the princes of Judah that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Ye have forsaken me, and therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shishak. Whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, The Lord is righteous. And when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, saying, They have humbled themselves, therefore I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance, and my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless they shall be his servants, that they may know my service, and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. So Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem, and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king's house. He took all. He carried away also the shields of gold which Solomon had made, instead of which king Rehoboam made shields of brass, and committed them to the hands of the chief of the guard that kept to the entrance of the king's house. And when the king entered into the house of the Lord, the guard came and fetched them, and brought them again into the guard chamber. And when he had humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him, that he would not destroy him altogether. And also in Judah things went well, so King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem, and reigned, for Rehoboam was one and forty years old when he began to reign, and reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nema, an Ammonitess. And he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Now the acts of Rehoboam, first and last, are they not written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet, and of Edo the seer, concerning genealogies? And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David, and Abijah his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 13 Now in the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam began Abijah to reign over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. And there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. And Abijah set the battle in array with an army of valiant men of war, even four hundred thousand chosen men. Jeroboam also set the battle in array against him with eight hundred thousand chosen men, being mighty men of valor. And Abijah stood up upon Mount Zemoraim, which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, thou Jeroboam! and all Israel. Ought ye not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David for ever, even to him and to his sons, by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, is risen up, and hath rebelled against his Lord. And there are gathered unto him vain men, the children of Belial, and have strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and tender-hearted, and could not withstand them. And now, think ye to withstand the kingdom of the Lord in the hand of the sons of David? And ye be a great multitude, and there are with your golden calves, 
which Jeroboam made you for gods? Have ye not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron and the Levites, and have made you priests after the manner of the nations of other lands? So that whosoever cometh to consecrate himself with a young bullock and seven rams, the same may be a priest of them that are no gods. But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him. And the priests which minister unto the Lord are the sons of Aaron, and the Levites wait upon their business, and they burn unto the Lord every morning and every evening, burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. The shewbread also set they in order upon the pure table, and the candlestick of gold with the lamps thereof, to burn every evening. For we keep the charge of the Lord our God, but ye have forsaken him. And behold, God himself is with us for our captain, and his priests with sounding trumpets to cry alarm against you. O children of Israel, fight ye not against the Lord God of your fathers, for ye shall not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambushment to come about behind them. So they were before Judah, and the ambushment was behind them. And when Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind. And they cried unto the Lord, and the priests sounded with the trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave a shout. And as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. And the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. And Abijah and his people slew them with a great slaughter. So there fell down slain of Israel five hundred thousand chosen men. Thus the children of Israel were brought under at that time, and the children of Judah prevailed, because they relied upon the Lord God of their fathers. And Abijah pursued after Jeroboam, and took cities from him, Bethel with the towns thereof, and Jeshano with the towns thereof, and Ephraim with the towns thereof. Neither did Jeroboam recover strength again in the days of Abijah. And the Lord struck him, and he died. But Abijah waxed mighty, and married fourteen wives, and begat twenty and two sons, and sixteen daughters. And the rest of the acts of Abijah, and his ways, and his sayings, are written in the story of the prophet Edo. Chapter 14 So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. In his days the land was quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods, and the high places, and brake down the images, and cut down the groves, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers, and to do the law and the commandment. Also he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places, and the images. And the kingdom was quiet before him. And he built fenced cities in Judah, for the land had rest, and he had no war in those years, because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities, and make about them walls and towers and gates and bars, while the land is yet before us, because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him, and he hath given us rest on every side. So they built, and prospered. 
and asa had an army that bare targets and spears out of judah three hundred thousand and out of benjamin that bare shields and drew bows two hundred and fourscore thousand all these were mighty men of valour and there came out against them zara the ethiopian with an host of a thousand thousand and three hundred chariots and came unto mersha and asa went out against him and they set the battle in array in the valley of zephatha at mersha and asa cried unto the lord his god and said lord it is nothing with thee to help whether with many or with them that have no power help us o lord our god for we rest on thee and in thy name we go against this multitude o lord thou art our god let no man prevail against thee so the lord smote the ethiopians before asa and before judah and the ethiopians fled and asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto gerar and the ethiopians were overthrown that they could not recover themselves for they were destroyed before the lord and before his host and they carried away very much spoil and they smote all the cities round about gerar for the fear of the lord came upon them and they spoiled all the cities for there was exceeding much spoil in them they smote also the tents of cattle and carried away sheep and camels in abundance and returned to jerusalem chapter fifteen and the spirit of god came upon azariah the son of oded and he went out to meet asa and said unto him hear me asa and all judah and benjamin the lord is with you while you be with him and if you seek him he will be found of you but if ye forsake him he will forsake you now for a long season israel hath been without the true god and without a teaching priest and without law but when they in their trouble did turn unto the lord god of israel and sought him he was found of them and in those times there was no peace to him that went out nor to him that came in but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries and nation was destroyed of nation and city of city for god did vex them with all adversity be ye strong therefore and let not your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded and when asa heard these words and the prophecy of oded the prophet he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of judah and benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from mount ephraim and renewed the altar of the lord that was before the porch of the lord and he gathered all judah and benjamin and the strangers with them out of ephraim and manasseh and out of simeon for they fell to him out of israel in abundance when they saw that the lord his god was with him so they gathered themselves together at jerusalem in the third month in the fifteenth year of the reign of asa and they offered unto the lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep and they entered into a covenant to seek the lord god of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul that whosoever would not seek the lord god of israel should be put to death whether small or great whether man or woman and they swear unto the lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets and all judah rejoiced at the oath 
for they had sworn with all their heart, and sought him with their whole desire, and he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. And also concerning Mecha, the mother of Asa the king, he removed her from being queen, because she had made an idol in a grove. And Asa cut down her idol, and stamped it, and burnt it at the brook Kidron. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days, and he brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated, and that he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and vessels. And there was no more war unto the five-and-thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. Chapter 16 In the six-and-thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah, and built Ramah, to the intent that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord, and of the king's house, and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, there is a league between me and thee, as there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Go, break thy league with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. And Ben-Hadad hearkened unto king Asa and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. And they smote Aijon, and Dan, and abel Mayim, and all the store cities of Naphtali. And it came to pass, when Basha heard it, that he left off building of Ramah, and let his work cease. Then Asa the king took all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Ramah, and the timber thereof, wherewith Basha was building. And he built therewith Geba and Mizpah. And at that time Hanani the seer came to Asa king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, Therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubians a huge host, with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet, because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to shew himself strong, in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Then Asa was wroth with the seer, and put him in a prison house, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people the same time. And, behold, the acts of Asa, first and last, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Asa, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet, until his disease was exceeding great, Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers, and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. And they buried him in his own sepulchres, which he had made for himself in the city of David, 
and laid him in the bed which was filled with sweet odours and diverse kinds of spices prepared by the apothecary's art and they made a very great burning for him End of section 44「And he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah, and set garrisons in the land of Judah, and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa his father had taken. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat, because he walked in the first ways of his father David, and sought not unto Balaam, but sought to the Lord God of his father, and walked in his commandments, and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. And all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents, and he had riches and honor in abundance, and his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover he took away the high places and groves out of Judah. Also in the third year of his reign he sent to his princes, even to ben Hale, and to Obadiah, and to Zechariah, and to Nathanael, and to Micaiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. And with him he sent to Levites, even Shemaiah, and Nathaniah, and Zebediah, and Asahel, and Shemiramoth, and Jehonathan, and Adonijah, and Tobijah, and Tobadonijah, Levites, and with them Elishamah and Jehoram, priests, and they taught in Judah, and had the book of the law of the Lord with them, and went throughout all the cities of Judah, and taught the people. And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the lands that were round about Judah, so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Also some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and tribute silver, and the Arabians brought him flocks, seven thousand and seven hundred rams, and seven thousand and seven hundred he-goats. And Jehoshaphat waxed great exceedingly, and he built in Judah castles and cities of store. And he had much business in the cities of Judah, and the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. And these are the numbers of them according to the house of their fathers, of Judah, the captains of thousands, Adna the chief, and with him mighty men of valor three hundred thousand. And next to him was Johanan the captain, and with him two hundred and fourscore thousand. And next to him was Amasiah the son of Zichri, who willingly offered himself unto the Lord, and with him two hundred thousand mighty men of valor and of Benjamin Eliada, a mighty man of valor, and with him armed men with bow and shield two hundred thousand. And next to him was Jehazabad, and with him an hundred and fourscore thousand ready prepared for the war. These waited on the king, beside those whom the king put in the fenced cities throughout all Judah. Chapter 18 Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance, and joined affinity with Ahab. And after certain years he went down to Ahab in Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance, and for the people that he had with him, and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth-Gilead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth-Gilead? And he answered him, 
I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord to-day. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth-Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides, that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers, and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria. And all of the prophets prophesied before him. And Zedekiah the son of Canaanah had made him horns of iron, and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria, until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth-Gilead, and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messengers that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good, Micaiah said. As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth-Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up, and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. And the king said to him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou shouldst say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Again he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth-Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. Zedekiah the son of Canaanah came near, 
and smote Micaiah upon the cheek, and said, Which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micaiah, and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with bread of affliction, and with water of affliction, until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, if thou certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken by me. And he said, Hearken all ye people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth-Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and I will go to the battle, and put thou on thy robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God moved them to depart from him. For it came to pass that, when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture, and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said to his chariot man, Turn thine hand, that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day. Howbeit, the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the even, and about the time of the sun going down, he died. Chapter 19 And Jehoshaphat the king of Judah returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu the son of Hanani the seer went out to meet him, and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly, and love them that hate of the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Nevertheless there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem. And he went out again through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim, and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed what ye do, for ye judge not for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. Wherefore now, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. Moreover, in Jerusalem did Jehoshaphat set of the Levites, and of the priests, and of the chief of the fathers of Israel, for the judgment of the Lord, and for controversies when they returned to Jerusalem. And he charged them, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a perfect heart, 
and what cause soever shall come to you of your brethren that dwell in your cities between blood and blood between law and commandment statutes and judgments ye shall even warn them that they trespass not against the lord and so wrath come upon you and upon your brethren this too and ye shall not trespass and behold amariah the chief priest is over you in all matters of the lord and zebediah the son of ishmael the ruler of the house of judah for all the king's matters also the levites shall be officers before you deal courageously and the lord shall be with the good chapter twenty and it came to pass after this also that the children of moab and the children of ammon and with them other beside the ammonites came against jehoshaphat to battle then there came some that told jehoshaphat saying there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side syria and behold they be in hazazontamar which is in gedi and jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all judah and judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the lord even out of all the cities of judah they came to seek the lord and jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of judah and jerusalem in the house of the lord before the new court and said o lord god of our fathers art not thou god in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen and in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee art not thou our god who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people israel and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, for ever. And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein, for thy name, saying, If, when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldst not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us, to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord, with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king jehoshaphat thus saith the lord unto you be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but god's to-morrow go ye down against them behold they come up by the cliff of ziz and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. To-morrow go out against them, 
for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And the Levites, of the children of the Kohathites, and of the children of the Korhites, stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning, and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so ye shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness, as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth for ever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, Every one helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies, and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. And on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Berakah, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of the same place was called the Valley of Berakah unto this day. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them, to go again to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries, when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest round about. And Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was thirty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shilhai. And he walked in the way of Asa, his father, and departed not from it, doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Howbeit the high places were not taken away, for as yet the people had not prepared their hearts unto the God of their fathers. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat First and last, behold, they are written in the book of Jehu, the son of Hanani, who is mentioned in the book of the kings of Israel. And after this did Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, join himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who did very wickedly. And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish, and they made the ships in Azion geber then Eliezer, the son of Dodava of Merisha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaziah, the Lord hath broken thy works. And 
the ships were broken, but they were not able to go to Tarshish. Chapter 21 Now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Jehoram his son reigned in his stead. And he had brethren, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah and Jehiel, and Zechariah and Azariah, and Michael and Shephatiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. And their father gave them great gifts of silver and of gold and of precious things, with fenced cities in Judah. But the kingdom gave he to Jehoram, because he was the firstborn. Now, when Jehoram was risen up to the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself and slew all his brethren with a sword, and diverse also of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was thirty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, like as did the house of Ahab, for he had the daughter of Ahab to wife, and he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. Howbeit the Lord would not destroy the house of David, because of the covenant that he had made with David, and as he promised, to give a light to him and to his sons for ever. In his days the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah, and made themselves a king. Then Jehoram went forth with his princes and all his chariots with him, and he rose up by night, and smote the Edomites which compassed him in, and the captains of the chariots. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah, unto this day. The same time also did Libna revolt from under his hand, because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Moreover he made high places in the mountains of Judah, and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication, and compelled Judah thereto. And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of David thy father, Because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat thy father, nor in the ways of Asa king of Judah, but hast walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and hast made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a-whoring, like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab, and also hast slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people, and thy children, and thy wives, and all thy goods and thou shalt have a great sickness by disease of thy bowels, until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram the spirit of the Philistines and of the Arabians that were near the Ethiopians. And they came up into Judah and break into it, and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house, and his sons also, and his wives, so that there was never a son left him, save Jehoahaz, the youngest of his sons. And after all this, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease. And it came to pass that in process of time, after the end of two years, his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness, so he died of sore diseases. And his people made no burning for him, like the burning of his fathers. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years, and departed without being desired. Howbeit, they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulchres of the kings. 
Chapter Twenty Two. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, his youngest son, king in his stead. For the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the eldest. So Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. Forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counsellor to do wickedly. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab, for they were his counsellors after the death of his father, to his destruction. He walked also after their counsel, and went with Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazael, king of Syria, at Ramoth-Gilead. And the Syrians smote Joram, and he returned to be healed in Jezreel because of the wounds which were given him at Ramah when he fought with Hazael, king of Syria. And Azariah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram, the son of Ahab, at Jezreel, because he was sick. And the destruction of Ahaziah was of God by coming to Joram, for when he was come, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu, the son of Nimshai, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. And it came to pass that when Jehu was executing judgment upon the house of Ahab, and found the princes of Judah, and the sons of the brethren of Ahaziah, that ministered to Ahaziah, he slew them. And he sought Ahaziah, and they caught him, for he was hid in Samaria, and brought him to Jehu. And when they had slain him, they buried him, because, said they, he is the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So the house of Ahaziah had no power to keep still the kingdom. But when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabeath, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain, and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. So Jehoshabeath, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoiada the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah, hid him from Athaliah, so that she slew him not. And he was with him hid in the house of God six years. And Athaliah reigned over the land. Chapter 23 And in the seventh year Jehoiada strengthened himself, and took the captains of hundreds, Azariah the son of Jehoram, and Ishmael the son of Jehohanan, and Azariah the son of Obed, and Messiah the son of Adiah, and Elishaphat the son of Zechri, into covenants with him. And they went about in Judah, and gathered the Levites out of all the cities of Judah, and the chief of the fathers of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. And all the congregation made a covenant with the king in the house of God. And he said unto them, Behold, the king's son shall reign, as the Lord hath said of the sons of David. This is the thing that he shall do. A third part of you entering on the Sabbath, of the priests and of the Levites, shall be porters of the doors. And a third part shall be at the king's house, and a third part at the gate of the foundation. And all the people shall be in the courts of the house of the Lord. But let none come into the house of the Lord, save the priests, and they that minister of the Levites. They shall go in, 
for they are holy. But all the people shall keep the watch of the Lord. And the Levites shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand, and whosoever else cometh into the house, he shall be put to death. But be ye with the king when he cometh in, and when he goeth out. So the Levites and all Judah did according to all things that Jehoiada the priest had commanded, and took every man his men that were to come in on the Sabbath, with them that were to go out on the Sabbath. For Jehoiada the priest dismissed not the courses. Moreover, Jehoiada the priest delivered to the captains of hundreds spears and bucklers and shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of God. And he set all the people, every man having his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, along by the altar and the temple, by the king round about. Then they brought out the king's son, and put upon him the crown, and gave him the testimony, and made him king. And Jehoiada and his sons anointed him, and said, God save the king. Now, when Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she came to the people into the house of the Lord. And she looked, and behold, the king stood at his pillar at the entering in, and the princes and the trumpets by the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and sounded with trumpets, also the singers with instruments of music, and such as taught to sing praise. Then Athelia rent her clothes, and said, Treason! Treason! Then Jehoiada the priest brought out the captains of hundreds that were set over the host, and said unto them, Have her forth of the ranges, and whoso followeth her, let him be slain with the sword. For the priest said, Slay her not in the house of the Lord. So they laid hands on her, and when she was come to the entering of the horse-gate by the king's house, they slew her there. And Jehoiada made a covenant between him and between all the people, and between the king, that they should be the Lord's people. Then all the people went to the house of Baal, and break it down and break his altars, and his images in pieces, and slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. Also Jehoiada appointed the offices of the house of the Lord by the hand of the priests, the Levites, whom David had distributed in the house of the Lord, to offer the burnt offerings of the Lord, as it is written in the law of Moses with rejoicing and with singing, as it was ordained by David. And he set the porters at the gates of the house of the Lord, that none which was unclean in any thing should enter in. And he took the captains of hundreds, and the nobles, and the governors of the people, and all the people of the land, and brought down the king from the house of the Lord. And they came through the high gate, into the king's house, and set the king upon the throne of the kingdom. And all the people of the land rejoiced. And the city was quiet, after that they had slain Athalia with the sword. Chapter 24 Joash was seven years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Zibiah of Beersheba. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, all the days of Jehoiada the priest. And Jehoiada took for him two wives, and he begat sons and daughters. And it came to pass, after this, that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. 
and he gathered together the priests and the Levites, and said to them, Go out unto the cities of Judah, and gather of all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year, and see that ye hasten the matter. Howbeit the Levites hastened it not. And the king called for Jehoiada the chief, and said unto him, Why hast thou not required of the Levites to bring in out of Judah and out of Jerusalem the collection, according to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and of the congregation of Israel, for the tabernacle of witness? For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken up the house of God, and also all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord did they bestow upon Balaam. And at the king's commandment they made a chest, and set it without at the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem, to bring in to the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, laid upon Israel in the wilderness. And all the princes and all the people rejoiced, and brought in and cast into the chest, until they had made an end. Now it came to pass, that at what time the chest was brought unto the king's office by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much money, the king's scribe and the high priest's officers came and emptied the chest, and took it, and carried it to his place again. Thus they did day by day, and gathered money in abundance. And the king and Jehoiada gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord, and also such as wrought iron and brass to mend the house of the Lord. So the workmen wrought, and the work was perfected by them. And they set the house of God in his state, and strengthened it. And when they had finished it, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada, whereof were made vessels for the house of the Lord, even vessels to minister and to offer withal, and spoons and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord, continually, all the days of Jehoiada. But Jehoiada waxed old, and was full of days when he died. An hundred and thirty years old was he when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings, because he had done good in Israel, both toward God and toward his house. Now, after the death of Jehoiada, came the princes of Judah, and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers, and served groves and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this their trespass. Yet he sent prophets to them, to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, which stood above the people, and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. And they conspired against him, and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, but slew his son. And when he died, he said, The Lord look upon it, and require it. And it came to pass, at the end of the year, that the host of Syria came up against him, 
and they came to judah and jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people and sent all the spoil of them unto the king of damascus for the army of the syrians came with a small company of men and the lord delivered a very great host into their hand because they had forsaken the lord god of their fathers so they executed judgment against joash and when they were departed from him for they left him in great diseases his own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of jehoiada the priest and slew him on his bed and he died and they buried him in the city of david but they buried him not in the sepulchres of the kings and these are they that conspired against him zebad the son of shemeth an ammonitus and jehoshabad the son of shimrith a moabitus now concerning his sons and the greatness of the burdens laid upon him and the repairing of the house of god behold they are written in the story of the book of the kings and amaziah his son reigned in his stead chapter twenty five amaziah was twenty and five years old when he began to reign and he reigned twenty and nine years in jerusalem and his mother's name was jehoaddan of jerusalem and he did that was right in the sight of the lord but not with a perfect heart now it came to pass when the kingdom was established to him that he slew his servants that had killed the king his father but he slew not their children but did as it is written in the law in the book of moses where the lord commanded saying the fathers shall not die for the children neither shall the children die for the fathers but every man shall die for his own sin moreover amaziah gathered judah together and made them captains over thousands and captains over hundreds according to the houses of their fathers throughout all judah and benjamin and he numbered them from twenty years old and above and found them three hundred thousand choice men able to go forth to war that could handle spear and shield he hired also an hundred thousand mighty men of valour out of israel for an hundred talents of silver but there came a man of god to him saying o king let not the army of israel go with thee for the lord is not with israel to wit with all the children of ephraim but if thou wilt go do it be strong for the battle god shall make thee fall before the enemy for god hath power to help and to cast down and amaziah said to the man of god but what shall we do for the hundred talents which i have given to the army of israel and the man of god answered the lord is able to give thee much more than this then amaziah separated them to wit the army that was come to him out of ephraim to go home again wherefore their anger was greatly kindled against judah and they returned home in great anger and amaziah strengthened himself and led forth his people and went to the valley of salt and smote of the children of seir ten thousand and other ten thousand left alive did the children of judah carry away captive and brought them unto the top of the rock and cast them down from the top of the rock that they all were broken in pieces but the soldiers of the army which amaziah sent back that they should not go with him to battle fell upon the cities of judah from samaria even unto beth horon and smote three thousand of them and took much spoil now it came to pass 
after that Amazia was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods of the children of Seir, and set them up to be his gods, and bowed down himself before them, and burned incense unto them. Wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amazia, and he sent unto him a prophet, which said unto him, why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? And it came to pass, as he talked with him, that the king said unto him, Art thou made of the king's counsel? Forbear, why shouldest thou be smitten? Then the prophet forbear and said, I know that God hath determined to destroy thee, because thou hast done this, and hast not hearkened unto my counsel. Then Amaziah, king of Judah, took advice, and sent to Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, come, let us see one another in the face. And Joash, king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah, saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son to wife. And there passed by a wild beast that was in Lebanon, and rode down the thistle. Thou sayest, Lo, thou hast smitten the Edomites and thine heart lifteth thee up to boast. Abide now at home. Why shouldest thou meddle to thine hurt, that thou shouldest fall, even thou and Judah with thee? But Emesia would not hear, for it came of God that he might deliver them into the hand of their enemies, because they sought after the gods of Edom. So Joash the king of Israel went up, and they saw one another in the face, both he and Amaziah king of Judah, at Beth Shemesh, which belongeth to Judah. And Judah was put to the worse before Israel, and they fled every man to his tent. And Joash the king of Israel took Amaziah king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and brake down the wall of Jerusalem, from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, four hundred cubits. And he took all the gold and the silver, and all the vessels that were found in the house of God, with Obededom, and the treasures of the king's house, the hostages also, and returned to Samaria. And Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, fifteen years. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last. Behold, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? Now after the time that Amaziah did turn away from following the Lord, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish, but they sent to Lachish after him, and slew him there. And they brought him upon horses, and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. Chapter 26 Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king in the room of his father, Amaziah. He built Eloth, and restored it to Judah, after that the king slept with his fathers. Sixteen years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jecoliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, 
who had understanding in the visions of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines, and brake down the wall of Gath, and the walls of Jabneh, and the walls of Ashdod, and built cities about Ashdod, and among the Philistines. And God helped him against the Philistines, and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gorbal, and the Mahunims. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad even to the entering in of Egypt, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem, at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the turning of the wall, and fortified them. Also he built towers in the desert, and digged many wells, for he had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains, husbandmen also, and vine-dressers in the mountains, and in Carmel, for he loved husbandry. Moreover, Uzziah had a host of fighting men that went out to war by bands, according to the number of their account, by the hand of Jael the scribe, and Messiah the ruler, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. The whole number of the chief of the fathers of the mighty men of valor were two thousand and six hundred, and under their hand was an army, three hundred thousand and seven thousand and five hundred, that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and habergeons and bows and slings to cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks, to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvellously helped till he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God, and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him fourscore priests of the Lord, that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah the king, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thine honour from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was wroth, and he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priests, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. And Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him, and, behold, he was leprous in his forehead. And they thrust him out from thence, yea, himself hasted also to go out, because the Lord had smitten him. And Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death, and dwelt in a several house, being a leper for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jotham, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah, first and last, did Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz, write. So Uzziah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the field of the burial which belonged to the kings. For they said, He is a leper. And Jotham his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 27 Jotham was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. 
His mother's name, also, was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did. Howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Lord, and the people did yet corruptly. He built the high gate of the house of the Lord, and on the wall of Ophel he built much. Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah, and in the forests he built castles and flowers. He fought also with the king of the Ammonites, and prevailed against them. The children of Ammon gave him the same year an hundred talents of silver, and ten thousand measures of wheat, and ten thousand of barley. So much did the children of Ammon pay unto him, both the second year and the third. So Jotham became mighty, because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham, and all his wars and his ways, Lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was five and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And Jotham slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Ahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. Chapter 28 Ahaz was twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, and made also molten images for Balaam. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and burnt his children in the fire, after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also, and burnt incense in the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. Wherefore the Lord his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria, and they smote him and carried away a great multitude of them captives, and brought them to Damascus. And he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who smote him with a great slaughter. For Pekah the son of Remaliah slew in Judah a hundred and twenty thousand in one day, which were all valiant men because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. And Zichri, a mighty man of Ephraim, slew Maaseah, the king's son, and Azrachim, the governor of the house, and Elkanah, that was next to the king. And the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren two hundred thousand women, sons, and daughters and took also away much spoil from them, and brought the spoil to Samaria. But a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Oded. And he went out before the host that came to Samaria, and said unto them, Behold, because the Lord God of your fathers was wroth with Judah, he hath delivered them into your hand, and ye have slain them in a rage that reacheth up to heaven. And now ye purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem for bondmen and bondwomen unto you? But are there not with you, even with you, sins against the Lord your God? Now hear me, therefore, and deliver the captives again, which ye have taken captive of your brethren. For the fierce wrath of the Lord is upon you. Then certain of the heads of the children of Ephraim, Azariah the son of Johanan, Berechiah the son of Meshilimoth, and Jehizkiah the son of Shalom, and Amasa the son of Hadlai, stood up against them that came from the war. 
and said unto them, Ye shall not bring in the captives hither, for whereas we have offended against the Lord already, ye intend to add more to our sins and to our trespass, for our trespass is great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the princes and all the congregation. And the men which were expressed by name rose up and took the captives, and with the spoil clothed all that were naked among them, and arrayed them, and shod them, and gave them to eat and to drink, and anointed them, and carried all the feeble of them upon asses, and brought them to Jericho, the city of palm trees, to their brethren. Then they returned to Samaria. At that time did King Ahaz send unto the kings of Assyria to help him. For again the Edomites had come and smitten Judah, and carried away captives. The Philistines also had invaded the cities of the low country, and of the south of Judah, and had taken Beth Shemesh, and Ajalon, and Gedaroth, and Shako, with the villages thereof and Timnah with the villages thereof, Geismo also, and the villages thereof, and they dwelt there. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz king of Israel, for he had made Judah naked, and transgressed sore against the Lord. And tiglath pilneser king of Assyria, came unto him, and distressed him, but strengthened him not. For Ahaz took away a portion out of the house of the Lord, and out of the house of the king, and of the princes, and gave it unto the king of Assyria, but he helped him not. And in the time of his distress did he trespass yet more against the Lord. This is that king Ahaz for he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus, which smote him. And he said, Because the gods of the kings of Syria help them, therefore will I sacrifice to them, that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him, and of all Israel. And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God, and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God, and shut up the doors of the house of the Lord, and he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. And in every several city of Judah he made high places to burn incense unto other gods, and provoked to anger the Lord God of his fathers. Now, the rest of his acts, and all of his ways, first and last. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, even in Jerusalem. But they brought him not into the sepulchres of the kings of Israel. And Hezekiah his son reigned in his stead. End of section 45